Hi, this is Scott Fresner, developer of TCEPs and Fast Films. I'd like to talk to you about the very important things you should do before you run routines and very important things you should do after you run routines. Now, I'm just using some sample files here that I've received from customers over the years, but before you run routines, first of all, you check out the file, and some of these things are covered in the preparing artwork for TCEPs, but you always check file resolution first. We're going to go to image, image size, and check resolution and make sure it's set for inches not pixels and make sure that the file is about 175 to 225 pixels per inch and it's the right physical size. I'm going to assume this is the correct physical size. Next thing you do is make sure the file looks good. This file actually came to me as a job that wasn't printing correctly and of course this is very flat. This file needs a lot of work but we're going to take and go to the image pull down menu come down to adjustments curves and if you've watched other videos in this series on how to use TCEPs you've seen me use the tone curve quite frequently to do what's called an S curve and I'm being bold and aggressive here and this is the previous this is the after and so you always check the file saturation now we could also go to image adjustments hue saturation and pop the saturation now it's going to glow we don't want that but we just pop the saturation Again, this is before and after. TCEPs is looking for color, and if it sees flat colors, it'll put a lot of black there to make the image flat. So we check the file resolution, boost saturation, and then we sharpen the image. Filter, sharpen, unsharp mask, and unsharp masking is a, an old camera term, and it sharpens areas of high contrast. This is probably too much sharpening, but watch the image. This is the original. This is after sharpening. We can't see much. Let's go more. That's the original sharpened. Original sharpened. See the feathers coming out a little more? Original sharpened. And you can see lots of difference here. And we need to make sure that the image is RGB, image, mode, RGB, not CMYK, not index color, RGB, that it has no layers. It says background in the layers palette. And in the channels palette, there are no additional channels besides the composite RGB and RGB. Another file, very similar. This is a these are things you do over and over. Image, image size. Physically, it's not very big. Now this may be softer by sampling it up. And by the way, notice this is set for pixels per centimeter. Don't know how it got there, but that happens in Photoshop sometimes. Now the resolution is not bad if you look at it, 182.88. Let's make this physically bigger. This is called upsampling it. And again, the file is very, very dull. Image adjustments curves. Little tone curve action here. Again, the S curve, my popular S curve. Before, after, before, after. Maybe the saturation boost, image adjustments. Now, if they want the file to look exactly like they gave you, then we don't do some of these things. But let's assume, look, look at the green. It's cleaner now. Yes, the blue is glowing a little bit, but it's now much cleaner before, after. And again, we go to image mode, make sure it's RGB. Go to layers, make sure it says background. Go to channels, make sure there's no additional channels there. After you've run routines, there are some things you should do to every design. Now, this is the original piece of artwork here, and I ran it on the five color plus two whites. And, of course, I had the black masked version that I loaded first, the white version second. And now here's our seps. Now, they look okay, but sometimes you'll call and say the seps look better with the black channel in place, the black channel on, even though I'm saying don't print black ink on a black shirt. When you put the black on, you're going, gee, it looks a lot better. That's because T-seps sees areas of, of shadow and sometimes wants to put some high, some uh, underbase there, and it's almost too much. And it's a judgment call. Again, we're trying to make a design work with red, yellow, blue, and make it work and not use CMYK. So it's difficult to make these things work exactly out of the box. There's a very important button called Remove Black from Underbase. This basically takes the black channel and copies it into the underbase and deletes any areas that are in the black channel from the underbase, meaning the black shirt will show through. Now this button needs to be run before you start deleting channels because it wants to look at some of the other channels. So before you delete other channels, run this right away. And basically you would run it with the black channel turned off. We want to see what it's going to look like if we run this routine. And we can run this routine over and over and over. And it's very common to do this three or four times to kind of clean things up and get the underbase to be uh, washed out or 
remove to where there's black. So we're going to click on remove black from underbase. Don't forget what this looks like. Remove black from underbase. And it, it tells you exactly what it's going to do. Now it did it. And we'll put the eye back on. It's a little better. Let me re run it one more time. Better. Now some designs don't need this, so this is here for designs that do need it. Now notice the black channel is not on, and we've removed some of the black from the underbase and taken some of that white out of there. And there we have it. Now we'll do that on designs where we see underbase showing through in areas that should be black areas on a black shirt. The next thing is on any design is be brave. Don't don't be shy. Don't look at a design and go, wow, I wish the yellow was more intense. I wish the brown was better. Just be bold. We're going to click on the lemon channel. We're going to go to image, adjustments, curves, and we're just going to be bold. And we're going to go to extremes. Don't be shy. Go to extremes and see what happens. So these are going to be the tweaks you're going to do once you run separations. Looks much better. And on this, again, I'm going to go to the dark blue channel, image, adjustments, curves. Let's just pop that blue a little bit. Now, once you're done with this, you want to look at each channel by itself, just quickly. And remember, when there's an eye on one channel in Photoshop, it displays the channel in black and white. When there's more than one eye on a channel, it displays the channels in color. We don't see the underbase white but because it's on a white background, but we see the channels in color. One channel that I almost always play with, only because I like to tweak a little bit, is the highlight. This is the highlight channel. This is what's going to make the white the brightest. When it prints on top of the underbase white, which will end up being a little dull because it's through a high mesh count, but when you flash through the underbase and print on top of it, the highlight is the one that will actually pop colors. And a lot of times I'll take a little bit of time, maybe too much sometimes, and I will use the Dodge Burn tool right here. And remember, you can change the brush size by dropping this window down and make the brush tip bigger. And if I hold down the Alt key on the keyboard, it burns. And this is the highlight channel, don't forget. I'm going to burn in some highlights. A lot of times you'll go to the tone curve and just see where the highlights are that maybe you can't see, meaning that maybe some of them, some of them are there, but they're so faint that you'd like to bring them out. That's too much, but you can see we have some highlights in here that are pretty faint. So a lot of times I'll look at the highlight with tone curve blasted out, just to see where things are at. And then I'll take the Dodge Burn tool, hold down the Alt key, and I'll burn in a little bit of the highlight. Just kind of burn. I'm just holding the mouse button down and going back and forth, and I'll burn a little more highlight in. Now again, if you're thinking, well, the program should do this, every design is different. Some designs need that highlight boost, especially if it's a cartoony kind of a design where there's not a really an original to match. And we know the highlight's going to really be the key color. When you print these things at press, you'll discover that it looks good up to the highlight. And when you put the highlight on, it brings it all together. The highlight really makes your image pop and gives it that life. So don't be shy in boosting. See some of the stuff you could barely see? Don't be shy in boosting your highlight color. Now, before this goes to the production floor, you should also change the names on the channels if you want. It's nice to have these are called labels. Nice to have these print out on the films because if you check when you're printing out the films to print labels, this prints. If you double click in this area, you know that this, the print order is correct or you assume it's correct because that's what TSEPS did. But we can put down the print sequence, maybe the mesh count. We're going to put it on a 230 mesh and leave it under base white. We'll go. This is the print sequence, 305 mesh, and maybe you're using uh, Rutland Yellow, and you put down Rutland Yellow. And the same thing for the Scarlet, 3, 305 mesh. Remember from the previous videos that most of these designs are 230s for the underbase, 305 for the top colors, and 230 for the highlight white. This is called changing the channel name, and again, this will now print on the film, so you'll have the print sequence, the mesh count, and the actual color and the Pantone color. A lot of times you'll want to compare the original to the separation. Now, if the design is a cartoon design, it's less critical because you're trying to make the separation look good. This is the original file. Now, I ran the separations first on this, and there's my separations with channels in place. And this is my original file that I opened up. That I actually duplicated the separation and turned all the channels off, so I'm just looking at the RGB. Now, this looks good. Let's turn the black off and see what we get. Now, this looks good right out of the box, but... The red's the wrong color. 
T-Seps is looking for a scarlet red, and this design has more of a magenta rather than a real red. And so it's not uncommon on designs where there are corporate colors, logo colors, Pantone matches, to run the routine to get the information. And then when you're done, change the actual assigned color, meaning I can click on my separation, make sure the red channel is highlighted, double-click on it, and that's the color it's looking for. I can click on the color square, this brings up Color Picker, and I can actually now sample from the file that's open the actual color I want. That's the actual color I want. There's the color in my design, and I can say OK. Now I've actually picked the actual Pantone match color. Those are things you do when you're done running separations on TSEPs, and these are the kind of the final checks you do.